For this year's tyre reviews winter tyre test, I've once again rounded up 10 of the best winter tyres I can find, but this year five of them are brand new tyres. How exciting! On test, we have the Bridgestone Blizzak LM005, the new Continental Winter Contact TS870, the new Goodyear Ultra Grip Performance 3, the new Hankook Winketer Icept RS3, the Kleber Chrisap HP3, the Michelin Alpine 6, the Petlas Snowmaster, the new Pirelli Sunturato Winter 2, the new Semperit Speed Grip 5, and the Redstone Windtrack Pro. Can any of the new tyres really move the game on, or will one of the established tyres remain dominant? Let's go find out. Snow handling, and I think if you're a tyre geek like me, you're going to enjoy this because the results are very interesting. Firstly, as a bit of a preface, this snow handling track is a very long track. It's a two minute lap, so while you might see a larger difference in times than you're used to seeing, in percentage terms, all the tyres are within just over 5%, and you can find the percentages on tyreviews.com as always, as with all the information. As I've said, none of these tyres were bad, but one has to be the slowest, and that was the Vredstein, 5.2% off the best. Now, the Vredstein was a complete joy to drive subjectively. You could just slide the car around, you could drift it, it was predictable, it was gradual, everything you want from a winter tyre. It just didn't quite have the grip of the best, which was a shame. The Wintrack Pro is getting on a bit. Perhaps it's time for an upgrade. I'm sure Vredstein, Apollo Vredstein are working on the next best thing and I'm sure it'll be amazing. The next group of tyres, all less than 4% off the best, and this will surprise you if you're into winter tyres or tyres or tyre testing, was Semprit, Continental and Bridgestone. The TS870 and the LMW5, not at the front of a winter tyre test. This just goes to show what progress has been made because a lot of the tyres ahead of it are new tyres. We'll get to them in a bit. Of the three, the Bridgestone was probably the most rounded, the easiest to drive, but they were all very, very close. The Continental was very nice, just a tiny bit of understeer, and the Semperit, just a nice rounded tyre. The Michelin Alpine 6 and the Goodyear Ultra Grip Performance 3, which is a new tyre, were less than 3% off the best. Now, both very nice to drive. I think the Goodyear in this car my driving style just picked up a little bit too much understeer to really help it round the lap. Perhaps it will do better in traction and braking, we'll find out in a minute because I haven't actually done the testing yet. The new Prelli Cinturato Winter 2 was fourth, just 2.3% off the best. And like the Redstone, another tyre that was completely lovely to drive quickly. It allowed just a bit of predictable, graceful oversteer to really help you round the lap, which is very good for times. And in third place was the new Hankook Winter Icept RS3. Now this tyre was just 1.2% off the best and had buckets of grip. It was a really exceptional tyre. And you know what, I know I'm probably saying this early because I haven't done dry and wet yet, so I might take it back. Pretty much all new Hankook tyres, like they're knocking it out of the park. Exceptional tyre by Hankook, really enjoyed driving it. I think of the bunch, it was my favourite to drive subjectively from, a, from an everything perspective, not just from a lap time perspective, but from like a what my dad would appreciate in a tyre perspective as well. In second place, and not a surprise and not a new tyre, is the Kleber, I, Kelber, Kelber, Chrisap HP3, Chrisap, oh I'm really sorry, HP3. Now, if you've been watching tyre tests the past year, you'll know that this tyre is often one of the best in the snow. It might not be the newest tyre, it might not be a premium tyre, it might be a sub-brand of Michelin, but it is very, very good in the snow. And in first place, which might come as a bit of a surprise to you. You know what, if I'm being honest, because I test blind, I didn't know what I was testing, I've just got set numbers. And when I was getting all the results put together with the actual tire at the end, I was like, huh, that finished there. Was the cheapest tire on test, the Petlas. This tire was exceptional. It was one of my favorites subjectively. If I was to critique it, the grip was a tiny bit peaky, so as you started sliding, it was a little bit quicker than the rest, but that is often the case with high levels of grip. Now, you might be confused, you might be thinking, Jonathan, you've spent the last seven, eight years of your life telling me not to buy a cheap tire, not to buy a budget tire, because they're not very good. I stand by that because what I'm telling you is based on the data I'm testing. I'm not saying every budget tire in the world is bad, because I've not tested every budget tire in the world. But also, especially with winter tires, it is entirely possible that Petlas have put all their eggs in the snow basket, and when we get this in the dry and wet, it might be a complete and total disaster. But on snow handling, the Petlas budget cheap tire has won the test on merit. It was the best both times I did snow handling, and it was one of my favorites subjectively. 
So, interesting. Let's go find out if that's repeatable in traction and braking. The Petless couldn't quite match the Bridgestone, Kleber or Continental in snow braking. Snow traction results can be found on the link in the description. Wet handling. Now, as always, I test blind, but it didn't require a genius to work out which the Petless was. The thing just oversteered, understeered, sideways steered, upside down steered. It was, I can't describe how difficult it was to drive. It was one of the most unpleasant experiences I've had driving a winter tire in a long time and was the only tire I quit out of. We do four laps and we average them out to get the time. I quit out after two, though the two laps were exactly the same time because I genuinely thought I damaged the car. Just, just cheap tires in the wet, it's difficult. The thing was exceptional in the snow, but in this group of tires in the wet, yikes. Next up, we're Clever and Sempra, way ahead of the budget winter tire, but still five seconds off the best. Both were fine, they just had a tiny amount of oversteer in the balance, nothing dramatic, but just obviously didn't have the grip of the best. Michelin Alpine 6 finished seventh. This tire, this seems to be a running trend with Michelin in the wet. The Michelin Alpine 6 had the safest balance, much like the Cross Climate 2 did in the all season test. It was a lovely safe understeer balance, but that understeer balance meant you couldn't quite extract a lap time because mid corner you were fighting understeer and then you were waiting to accelerate, waiting to accelerate, and if you're not accelerating, you're losing time. So that's where it lost out, but subjectively, it was a very good tire. Frehley and Vestein were essentially tied for fifth. And both of these tires were my favorite tires to drive. They felt sporty for a winter tire. It's not an ultra high performance winter tire. They were good tires to drive, like enjoyable tires. If you're looking for an enjoyable tire in wet handling, they're the tires to buy. But they couldn't quite match the lap time at the very best. By the smallest margins ahead was the Hankook and the Goodyear. Now, like the Michelin, both these tyres seem to lose a little bit of time mid-corner and corner exit because you were fighting understeer a little bit more, which is a safe balance for the road. Both had excellent levels of grip for a winter tyre. We're, we're so close to the front now. This group is so stacked. Smallest differences make a difference in the overall order. This just leaves Continental and Bridgestone. And if you know much about winter tyres in this segment, you're not gonna be shocked. The Continental was second. It was a tire that rewarded being a little bit more delicate with the actions, but like some of the previous others, had a lovely sort of safe understeery balance. Not sporty, but incredible grip. And Bridgestone are back at the top with the LM005, the Blizzak LM005. This tire is consistently the very best winter tire in the wet, and once again, it proves to be. I knew it when I was driving it. I was like, this is the Bridgestone. This just feels, although the difference in time is small, it is noticeable as a test driver, and you can just feel Bridgestone are doing something different to everyone else with their winter tires. And it's so impressive in the wet. It's a great job, Bridgestone. Bridgestone continued to lead in the wet with Continental and Hankook close behind. The budget pet last stopped the vehicle over 12 meters longer from just 80 kilometers an hour. Kleber, Continental and Hankook were the best in the straight aquaplaning test and you can see the results of curved aquaplaning on the link in the description. This is what I learned during dry handling. I learned that these are all 17 inch non-performance winter tires and they felt like that. If you want a winter tire that has some sort of handling, buy an all season tire. There's a video on the channel that I shot at exactly the same time, tested in the same conditions and the same size using the same vehicle to show you that an all season tire does have a slight handling advantage in the dry and you'll be able to look at the differences between the two. And there will be an in-depth video going into this uh, twin test in the future, maybe in a couple of weeks to so subscribe for that. But if you insist on having a 17 inch winter tire that has some sort of sporty behavior, I would suggest uh, looking at the Pirelli more because I think that probably had the most dynamic handling. But jokes aside, all of them were surprisingly good considering this dry handling track especially, which is very fast and very long corners, uh, is so far out of their design parameters. I don't know what I was expecting. They're all winter tires. So let's move on to the conclusion. As usual, I've put the rolling resistance of the tires on the screen. Ignoring the rather random petless budget tire, which for some reason had a massive advantage, the Bridgestone was the best of the main group with the separate Goodyear and Continental also impressive. 
You may have noticed I haven't mentioned the dry braking of the tires. That's because for the first time in my testing history, I had issues with GPS drift on the data logger, meaning my results weren't as accurate as I need them to be. By the time I'd noticed these issues, the tires had run a lot more testing. And while I did have dry braking reran, the data isn't as representative as I'd like due to the extreme wear on the tires at the time of the dry braking results were generated. I toyed with the idea of just dropping dry braking from the overall results, but when I actually went through the data, it didn't actually change the overall results, so I've left it in, but just keep that in mind when you're looking at the results. The overall score weighting is exactly the same as last year's winter tire test, and new to this year, you can head over to the Tire Reviews website, which is linked in the description below, and adjust the score weighting to your own driving preferences, which is awesome because it means it gets the best tire for you, not the one I'm telling you, because I don't drive like you do. I highly recommend you go over to the Tire Reviews website and try this out yourself. One final note, to avoid market confusion, I'm not including the new Goodyear Ultra Grip Performance 3 in the overall results, although you have heard about it up until this point. This is due to Goodyear's decision to postpone the launch of the new tire from 2022 to next year, 2023. I'm sure I'll have this tire in next year's winter test as well, so I'll just talk about it more then. In last place is the Petlas Snowmaster W651. The name really isn't a lie. It really is a Snowmaster and has a very, very, very low rolling resistance. However, if you want a tire to work in conditions other than snow, this is certainly one to avoid. Its real weakness was the wet, which we see so often in cheap tires, where it was over 30% worse than the best in wet braking and a complete handful in wet handling. In fact, it's one of the worst tires I've driven in wet handling in year. Please don't fit this tire. The Kleber Chrysap HP3 was another tire that excelled in the snow and it had great straight aquaplaning resistance and while it was nowhere near as bad as the Petlas in the wet, it couldn't match the best on test, especially in the important wet braking test, meaning eighth overall is the best it could manage. The Michelin Alpin 6 finished the surprise seventh overall. As usual, it was a very good tire in the dry with the shortest dry braking. However, its wet and snow performance didn't live up to the usual Michelin brand expectations and it had one of the highest rolling resistance on test. A test to forget for the French manufacturer, especially after Michelin won my all season test in the same size and the same conditions with the Cross Climate 2. And as other tests from across the industry are appearing, it's confirming this is the exception rather than the rule for the Alpine 6. You can check out the data on tirereviews.com. Sixth place overall went to the impressive Redstein Windtrack Pro. This tire was excellent in the dry, held its own in the wet with good subjective handling, and was a quiet tire. Unfortunately, it wasn't the strongest tire in the snow, with the slowest snow handling time and the worst traction. It struggled in the deeper water of the aquaplaning test and had the highest rolling resistance of all the tires on test. Potentially an option for climates like the UK for people who really want to fit a winter tire instead of an all season tire, but probably not a strong option anymore for climates that see a lot of snow. The Semperate Speed Grip 5 and 5th was essentially exactly as good as the Redstein in the dry, not quite as good in the wet, but much better in the aquaplaning test, a little bit better in the snow, but it did have one of the best rolling resistances on the test. I'd like to see some more wet performance from this tire to push it further towards the front of the results. The new Prelli Cinturato Winter 2 was the most fun tire to drive in all conditions. It was the winter tire of the group that seemed to focus as much on lateral grip as it did on longitudinal grip. And while it wasn't the best in snow braking or the aquaplaning test, it was great in snow handling, wet handling and dry handling. And it was just a very likable tire. A deserved fourth overall and a tire I recommend. The new Hankook Winter Icept RS3 continues Hankook impressive run of results, and other than an outlier in snow braking, it is a winter tire with no major weaknesses. It was impressive in the dry, very impressive in the wet, and thoroughly enjoyable around the snow handling track, with predictable handling and high levels of grip. A good aquaplaning result and high snow traction cements the tire in third place, and is a tire I highly recommend. The Continental Winter Contact TS870 might be one of the older new tires in the test, but you can never count Continental out of a winter tire test, and the TS870 had an exceptional run of results. It was the best tire in the wet overall, being one of the few tires which excelled both in the wet grip test and the deeper water test of aquaplaning. In the snow, it was better longitudinally than it was laterally, which helps in the overall results as braking is the highest weighted scoring in the snow, and it was good during dry handling, even if it did struggle a little bit in dry braking. Plus, it had a relatively low rolling resistance. A very impressive tire, another one worthy of being highly recommended. And in first place, winning the test overall, we have the Bridgestone Blizzak LM005. 
As in other tests, this wasn't the best in dry braking and wasn't quite as balanced as some of the other tyres in stow handling, but they were the only weaknesses of the LM005. The LM005 excelled in the wet grip test with the best grip in wet handling and the shortest wet braking. It also won snow braking and performed well in snow traction, had some of the lowest noise on test and the lowest rolling resistance of the top tyres. A thoroughly deserved win for the Japanese giant. Congratulations to Bridgestone. That's the end of the test. Please hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know what your next set of tires will be in the comments below. Go and review your tires over at tirereviews.com as it really does help this channel and I'd appreciate it. If you have any questions about this test, please do ask below and as always, safe motoring.